Hey everyone, welcome to our next video installment. Today we're going to talk about the top five dry flies you need to have in your box. So we're sitting here in early February when we're filming this. It is like 18 degrees outside and we're all thinking of rising fish. So today we're going to talk about the absolute must-haves that you need to have in your box. I've got some of them here. As we go through one by one, you're going to see some up-close pictures of them and below you can see the links on our website. So without further ado, our number one fly that you need to have in your box, and number one and number two, in my opinion, are kind of interchangeable as to which one is the top, but I'm gonna put this one at number one because it was our top selling dry fly of 2022. So that one is the elk hair caddis. So we have a couple different colors and sizes and styles of your elk hair caddis, your regular one, high viz we have a elk hair and CDC that we brought out last year as well. And this is a must have pattern for a number of reasons. Here in the East, we see caddis everywhere. I think caddis are a great species for good and medium or bad water quality. They seem to show up everywhere. Um, and then they are just an active bug that doesn't have a specific hatch time like we see for specific mayflies out there. So we've got caddis that might last months on end, a couple different species, different size, different colors, but it seems like it's something that's constantly around. Uh, we see some caddis and sedges out west, and here in the east we see a ton of caddis, so making sure that you have that. I also prefer an elk hair caddis because of the buoyancy of the elk hair. It is a great fly for fishing for small wild trout streams. So our state fish is the brook trout, and we have hundreds, literally hundreds and hundreds of brook trout streams here in Pennsylvania. And I like it because you can see it, the elk hair is pretty bright. I use a bleached on mine when I tie them um, for this purpose, and they float all day. So you can use them as a great uh, attractor fly when you're fishing for some of those wild fish. Number two, we've covered the caddis, now we're gonna cover the mayflies. Number two is a Adam's fly, or an Adam's fly. Shout out to Adam behind the camera, he's getting some royalty rights on this. Um, so the Adam's, we have it in a handful of different types. We've got uh, your typical cat skill, and we have parachute, both in a white post and an orange post. Uh, the Adams is a great all-around mayfly uh, imitation. So we have them in a wide range of sizes. So you want to make sure that you have some of these in your box to cover all of your mayfly species. Um, the exceptions to the rules would be your super bright ones. But when we teach our classes here, I talk about fly selection. And in my opinion, there are three categories that you need to select your flies in. One is the species type. You want to throw mayflies when it's mayflies. You want to throw caddisflies and caddisflies, stoneflies and stoneflies. Next is size, and third is color. And I think that's why the Adams fly has been so popular over decades and decades of fly fishing, is that it matches two, or three of those, two out of three of those very, very well. And that last one, just kind of a light gray color that matches a lot of um, different mayfly species out there. So whether you're fishing March browns, pale morning duns, sulfurs, um, any of your quill bodies, it kind of matches a little bit of everything. So it's a great fly for just a general matching purpose out there, and you can tie them in any size that you want. When we're talking dry flies, the next one that we're gonna talk about is actually an emerger, but what I would consider a dry fly emerger, something that is going to float um, in the majority of the body of the fly. So this one is our Klinkenhammer. So it is a parachute post Klinkenhammer in which we have a hackle on the top and part of the body is going to sink. I still consider this a dry fly because most of this fly is going to float. Now when we talk about emergers, even though this is a dry fly video, we have emergers that are going to be mid-water column, that are going to be in the film, and then ones like this that are in the middle of that true emergence where it's coming out of its exoskeleton into the dry fly with wings. So we want something to at least match that. I was just having a conversation with somebody in the shop the other day about um, I feel like people miss the emerger stage in this life cycle that we try to emulate in our fly fishing um, adventures out there and we need to fish more emergers so have some emergers in your box we really like this Klinkenhammer style floats really well the bottom of it sinks we have it in I think four different colors and I think five different sizes of each of those so add a couple of those to your box the next one that we see here is a rusty spinner or any sort of spinner pattern so talking about life cycle We've seen that emergence. We've got the um, dry flies in our caddis, or specifically our mayflies that we're talking about here. Um, and now we've got the spinner pattern. So a fly fishermen call it the power hour, that last hour of daylight 
where all the mayflies that have hatched throughout the day have gone off and either from the same day or the day prior they're coming back the mayflies are mating just above the tops of the trees they're kind of working their way down the females are dropping their eggs and then both the male and the females die after this mating process just like the salmon do out there so these fish all of a sudden have a designated feeding time where they know an easy meal is going to come where they have these dead uh, flies where there's an abundance of them on the creek and if you've never experienced this before make sure that in 2023 you do that so we've got a handful your generic ones like our rusty spinner kind of like the atoms where it's a it's a uh, a color that's going to match a little bit of everything but we also have some specific specific ones like um, our cahills our sulfurs march browns um, blue winged olives things like that so you can have specifics if you want to but make sure you have some sort of spent wing spinner in your box because if not you're going to miss that power hour and find a ton of success um, in fishing a pattern like this and last but certainly not least as we're sitting here in the middle of winter and most of you guys are as well you need some sort of tiny dry fly so this is anything i would consider tiny 20 and below one of my favorites which is the one that i have here is a griffith gnat so a griffith gnat can imitate either a tiny dry fly or a cluster of midges so some of those midges are 24s 26s 28s um, and i like to fish maybe a 20 or 22 in a griffith gnat through the summer and then also through the winter when we're seeing a lot of the midges hatch and making sure that you have a tiny offering we go through our classes we've talked again before here um, and we talk about the size of the bug specifically in the winter yes we have um, some midges coming off in those smaller sizes but we're also going to see some smaller flies because um, those those nymphs are still working through their molting and growing process so you're going to see some tinier flies in the, in the winter compared to the spring and summer when they're hitting their full adulthood so even if you take this and it happens to sink it might look like something that is actually natural in the water this time of year so we've run through our absolute top must-have dry flies that you need to have in your box if you're looking for a box here's a great one here this is our slim box we have it in four different colors really really lightweight holds a ton of flies um, and we have them in a couple different colors so you can organize them too so if you're looking for any of these flies hop on the link below all of our links to all of these as well as to all of our products including all of our dry flies are right in the description here um, and if you need any other assistance reach out to us and before we finish this video make sure that you like this video subscribe to it and leave us a comment if we missed anything let us know what one of your must-have dry flies is and if you think that we need to add something to our website we're actually adding some new patterns here in the next couple months too thank you guys for watching we hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time